All right, strap ourselves in for a fun day of a wet weather sports, that's for sure. I'm off to a, uh, a game today. It's just pissing down at home. I've got an hour to drive and we'll see if we even get close to a game. But anywho, Luke Garner, how good is he at football? 81, following his uh, massive score last week as well. So very, very impressive what he's been able to you know, to do over the last few weeks there with a you know a couple of tries and try assists the other week and then the try in this one. But eight, eight tackle breaks, two offloads there, just the two missed tackles on the negative side. Very, 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 very cool. Sorensen will be back though, and that's yeah the only thing that's kind of stopping people. Although I did see a couple of uh, teams in Facebook groups that uh, had Ghana, so good stuff on that front. I suppose we do have to focus on it while we're here. And very very sad news again that Nathan Cleary walked off the field with an injury there. Thank goodness he he had scored a, a decent amount of points by halftime or just before halftime there in 38 and a half minutes there of 39 points with that try save a turnover tackle in there in that left hand corner. And he obviously picked up the you know a goal and then just base starts, man. Two force dropouts just showed why he's so important to this side, obviously, and to this game because he's so great to watch. And people, you know, you speak about Reese Walsh as being so entertaining, but just watching Cleary do his thing, it's just amazing to watch. And he just has it on a string and he, he gets his players around the park and gets to repeat sets and does everything good. So very, very sad. And it's just, a, yeah, it is a tough one. 100% it's the toughest one of the year. I was having a laugh last night. I was like, well, who was a better four-week or four-week hold, P. Kura or Cleary? <laughs> At least Cleary getting a few points out of it. But uh, yeah, it's obviously P. Kura, P. Kura isn't as bad, anywhere near as bad as holding Cleary this whole time. So if you are one of those people, chalk that down to bad luck. It's not, none of it's your judgment. Obviously, you could have sold him back back then. After, anytime after that, yeah, once we heard he was going to be back in round seven, it was like, we just hold and he goes good from there. And it's just, um, he's just had bad luck. And that's what's happened with our teams as well. So super frustrating on that front. And he's now a sell for those that have sold him, brought him back, held him for a bunch of weeks, like my head Ted team. I feel your pain. And I know uh, a lot of you guys do as well. So there you go. Not good. Not good on that front. But yeah, thank goodness he at least scored some yeah, decent points if you captained him like my head Ted team did. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people out there did who do own him. You're in for a good one in this one and it didn't, didn't happen obviously. So yeah, prayers up for him and hopefully it is uh, not too bad. And it obviously opens up things for origin as well. I, I very much doubt that he'll come into origin fit. So, you know, very high likelihood, I reckon of a Heinz, a Heinz and, uh, and Burton combo maybe. Although there's a, a decent chance that Moses is back next week as well. So we'll have to see what happens on that front. There, I very doubt, very much doubt, Luai will end up in that six spot if if Cleary's not there. So, Isaiah Yo, sixty three for him in this outing again. End up with a line break as well, so he's such an impressive man. No negatives in this one. Sorry, one penalty in this one, but um, yeah, thirty one tackles for no misses, one hundred eighty six meters, the six tackle breaks. It's an absolutely terrific effort as always there on that one. And uh, if you captain him, sixty three, you'll take that for sure. So happy days on that front. Hold all the way to Origin could be the one to hold through Origin as well, for sure. There's actually a couple of mids here I want to speak about in this game, which he could have potentially picked this week. I just didn't expect the back-to-back -back from from one of them, but yeah, alas, we're here. Edwards, 58. So just obviously with Cleary going off, he kicks another three goals, gets him up to 52, and he's just such an impressive player as well. And he's just each and every week stamping his authority on trying to get that Fullback jersey in origin, so good stuff for Edwards there with the three goals, the 10 tackle breaks, 250 meters. No tries, no try assists, and still a 58. Super impressive. Same with Brian Toll, back to 11 tackle breaks, just under 200 meters. Soft, mate, what are you doing? And uh, a line break try as well. And on the other side of the ball, so happy, so lucky with this one. In the end, it was uh, Jacob Kiraz started well, got a couple of line breaks, then picked up the injury, and we're like, oh, no, he's gone. And, and this is one of those guys that you can't lose when you're origin by planning because he covers you know, so many of those important weeks for us. And with him going down, I was like, no, I don't need to use another trade, not in the wing fullback center position as well. So thank goodness he's okay. He's obviously carrying some knee problems, and that may have been a bit of a flare-up of... You know, the knee problems that he's, he currently has. I'm not sure which leg it's in, to be honest. But that's my assumption is that obviously, yeah, put it in the wrong, put it moved in the wrong direction that didn't need to go and uh, and flared it up. And 
thank goodness he was able to continue playing and and picked up another twenty points in that in that last that last effort that last try which um yeah got him to sixteen ten but yeah obviously a very close game a, a good game a good outing from dogs there was a couple of errors there and, and Karaz was one of those guys that that did pick up a few errors which I think cost the cost the dogs a little bit for sure but um yeah on the other side of the ball he he did everything he could to try and yeah get them in a good position to win this game so. Catch 22 sometimes, but there were a few errors from him. Obviously, Burton had a couple of errors there as well. And a few of their other outside backs that, um, yeah, it just wasn't perfect for him. So they're, they're still a little bit away from, from competing with the top teams, but this is a great step in the right direction. Very impressed by the dogs and very happy with Carrasco's score, that's for sure. If you've had Burton for the last few months, you, you're absolutely loving it. He's been doing great, hitting 50s pretty regularly and another try in this one. And yeah, I think he's really stamping his authority on that six jersey as well. Big guy I wanted to speak about was Max King. A 654K, like you're hoping for a 47-48, which is what he had been scoring. And a 52 in this one with you know good numbers there, 42 in the tackles column, 117 on the run meter side, which is great. And with Maxi, if you're buying him now, you're locking him in for you know, the entirety of the buy period. And he's someone I did buy last, last year. I just said at this point in the season, you're probably looking for a little bit more value rather than just having a guy that you can just plug in in that type of position because you know he's just going to be around that 40 to 50 which is really good for sure but um yeah there's definitely you know some other guys you could look at to try and make a little bit more money over the next few weeks and then you could plug in someone like king over you know round 13 or something like that but anyway he's someone that if you want in the mids if it gets to that point where we need another one or two mids then king king will be good speaking of next guy fisher harris at 50 there in his 51 minutes he's gone back to back really good scores which is not expected from Fish. He's never, he's never sitting around the you know the forties, forty five to fifty type of range, unfortunately, and just just how it is. Like he doesn't play enough minutes, miss tackles, doesn't get the the big tackle numbers sometimes. But the last two weeks he has, and if you do want to take that punt, we mentioned him in the one of the videos uh, during the week. If you want to take that punt on him, you can, but do expect that he can go back down to a thirty odd to a forty, and. Yeah, 40 would be great. Like you'd take 40s over the, this period. And he wouldn't lose He wouldn't lose any money. Probably wouldn't gain any. The odd 50 would be great. You make a bit of cash there. But yeah, it's just something to just someone to, to note. Obviously 120K or less, or he's probably going to be 110K or something less than what Max King is. That plays those first couple of buys. That could work out for you if you want. But then I think you're selling him from round 16. So it's a short-term rental. Read money. 51, he had 64 tackles. So that just shows obviously against... The Panthers, they, when they bring people back through the middle, there's so much traffic in in the center there for guys to make plenty of tackles who play big minutes. And that was that was Max King. That was Reed Marnie in this one for sure. So yeah, helped out for those guys. But obviously some missed tackles are going to be part of that against the Panthers. It just is what it is. They are such destructive ball runners. So 51 for him, you take that as an owner for sure. And he's a good guy to have over the buy period as well. Luai 43, Alamotti 42. So he's um yeah he's done really well in that center spot or wing spot or wherever he's played across his three games that he's played so far and picked up a try saver, a couple of turnover tackles. So that helped him out. But 23 tackles for three misses showed that, you know, he can do that on that side of the ball. And then when he did run, he looked damaging. So that was cool. He should be out of the team next week though. You'd imagine. Will Crichton, Stephen, that is... Really yeah, good game for him. He really worked hard. And there was a couple of them. He just ran dead straight at the uh, at the guys there. And then he got Adokar with 38. It was fine. Lindsey Smith, 33. Mitch Kenny, same. Karen, 32. This was a gross game. So he ended up having two offloads, which is great. And something he hasn't been doing on a regular basis. But unfortunately, six missed tackles, guys. He ran them all for 62 meters. That's, yeah, not great, obviously. 30 tackles, about normal for what we're expecting at the moment in this type of minutes roll as well. So the minutes are down and the missed tackles are up. So pretty gross. Like even without the missed tackles, you take that away and it's a 44 in the 44 minutes, which is a battle you can expect. And, and unfortunately, if he's going to be playing under 50 minutes, then the, the caution warning signs really just spark up, unfortunately. So yeah, a little bit worried about Curran going forward. Hopefully he, uh, he can sort it out, to be honest with you, but... I'm a little bit worried. They need to get him up in, in the 50-minute range. And obviously, there has been some injuries and, and the like across you know, different weeks that 
has helped him, I think, a little bit get to some bigger minutes. But he's not the guy. And even Kurt Mann playing 35 as well. So it's very well spread around the traps. And I wonder what happens next week when, like, even Bailey Hayward is playing more minutes than Curran, more play, more minutes than Mann, which is really strange, to be honest with you. Like, even, he, you know, he didn't, do, he didn't offer anything on the attacking side and he missed six tackles as well. So I'm not sure what the decision-making is around that, but... Yeah, very interesting for sure. Man, 31. Hutcho, 31. You're holding Karen, by the way. Uh, Hughes, 30. I don't know why he didn't get that line break at the end, but it was credited in Supercoach and Dream Team and stuff. So, yeah, strange. Anyway, and only one tackle break? Come on, man. I was trying to... That was my looping position in number five with Hughes. And I was like, anywhere around the 35 mark, I'm just going to take his score, which I took last stick in the end. So it worked out a little bit better. But I didn't want that sweat. I didn't. I just wanted to, to let it go and let it let him play. That's for sure, and not have to worry about what he scored. But yeah, Hughes with thirty. I think it's just going to be a clear hold. Thirty six minutes. He he was on twenty two and he came back on and I think he was on eighteen after like four or five minutes once he returned. So he obviously turned that back around and and can run the footy well, in certain parts of the field, which is nice. Liam Henry. Yeah, so just holding Hughes. Liam Henry twenty nine. Kick out twenty eight. Bit gross. Seven missed tackles. Again, it's going to happen. All of the middle forwards, Jamin Salmon got seven missed tackles. Anyone around those edges, they get tired, they miss tackles. And guys are coming back at angles and stuff. And it, it cooks them, that's for sure. Cole. It's Jack Cole there. 24 in his half of footy, which was solid. No attacking stats. Had the one turnover tackle. Did some kicking. Ran the, pull, ran the ball a little bit. Defended well, 19 for one. So there's some... But they said after the game, or at halftime there, that... Snyder's actually just got injured in New South Wales Cup as well. So if that's the case, it is Jack Cole season and I'll be jumping on for sure at that price. We know what he can do um, you know, in, in full games of footy. He's going to be a 40 type of guy. And if we get him for round 13, 14, that'd be pretty cool. I doubt that the way things are looking with Cleary is pretty devastated that he'll be back in the next bunch of weeks. And yeah, I think we get him to round 16 and we can offload him from there. That's my thoughts. That's early. I don't know how long Schneider's going to be out for. It sounds like, I think they said Hammy as well. Again, I'm not sure. We'll find out more during the week. May 22 to River 22. Yeah, May just, it's just not great, isn't it? And a few people are looking at Tracy as a potential option. Take out this Panthers game. And that's the big thing with Karaz. I was like, I was going to be happy as with like a 30 odd against the Panthers. 40 would have been like, whew, I'm cheering. 57, absolute gold. May 22. Eight, eight tackle breaks to only at 22 is pretty gross. He had negative, what, 17 between missed tackles, errors, penalties, and inside 10s. It's, uh, yeah, discipline not so good on that front for Taylor. And, yeah, not what you want, that's for sure. So people looking at him as a buyer, I, just, I just still don't see it. He just doesn't get the ball, man. And when he does get the ball, he, he, there's some there's some issues there on that front. Preston back to 21 in 31 minutes, so he'll start to lose money, which is what we were hoping for. Had to potentially be a buy in round 13. But uh, yeah, he keeps coming off the bench, not playing big minutes. So I wonder how that's going to play out. He, Him and Salmon just shared the minutes in this one with Jamin getting 21. Obviously with seven missed tackles. And again, against a, a really strong Penrith outfit, 21 is probably in his wheelhouse for sure. So yeah, not much else to say. You can sell him, you can hold him. That's about it. And then Bronson Sherry was 17 in his time on the park. So yeah, not a good one there. Moving to the Eels. Let's talk about him straight up because it's uh it frustrated me a little bit just because <laughs> just with how good he scored. But Blaze Talungi, wow, at fullback, which is obviously his preferred position, he was the attacking weapon in this side, and there was no if buts about it. Brown was obviously there as well, and, and he was an instigator in a lot of it, and got that seal and try, which was really cool. But Blaze, I'm very very upset that I didn't end up holding him, and I thought here's me thinking I'm doing good things and getting rid of the dead wood getting rid of the guys that aren't playing at the moment. This was like three or four weeks ago and I, I traded him out. And uh, yeah, didn't get any luck on that one, that's for sure. So 57 for him. And he's almost a buyer heading into this week because he's he's going to be playing around 13, I'd imagine, at least. And then Gutho might be back in 14. It seems to be what the casualty ward says. And if that's the case, he's probably got 100K to make now. But again, teams will now look at him as a bit more of a threat and they'll start to defend him a little bit better. Right, so yeah, it could be similar to that Armstrong situation where he comes out and gets a really good score, and then uh, yeah, not so much the next week. But that obviously happened with Blaze the first time too. He came out and played really good in the centers, and then not so good at six. 
it could happen that way. He could also come out and do really well and hit like a 40 average over the next bit and, and do good things. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say with Blaze. Like very impressive if you played him, awesome work. And if you didn't and you own him, it's annoying, but at least you get some cash gains, which is nice. I think he had a break even near the 30 mark, which is good. Something I actually wanted to mention, guys, is that RTS is out indefinitely. It looks like up to about a month with a hamstring injury. It's not a grade one. It's obviously must be a moderate grade two. And if you had someone else you want, like if you if you have the ability to potentially reverse your trade and it's not letting you, I just wanted to give you a little insight on that. If you've moved guys around, so if you've traded someone out on the bench, right? You need to put them that play and then you've moved them in the starting side, right? Whoever you've brought in, move the guy that you want to reverse the trade with back onto the bench. Both players have to be on the bench basically from what they were before you traded to what they are now, if that makes sense. It's a little bit, feels a little bit awkward. feels a little bit weird, but just make sure and just play around with it. If it's not working for you as a reserve tr reverse trade and, and the money lines up, you're able to do it basically. And it does, still doesn't let you move them to the bench or move them to the starting side and try that. And, and the position they were in before. If they're a center, move them into center. Like if they were in the center position, move them into that. If they're dual position, maybe they're in wing fullback, move them back into that and then reverse the trade. See what you can do, because I think RTS, RTS you have to sell now. But Dylan Brown, 79. Great score from him. Obviously, the errors. could have It could have been way more. And uh, yeah, I've been speaking about him as a buyer over the last few weeks. And really, it was Brown and Talangi that hurt me this week. Um, that hurt me last night. I was you know, happy enough with my scores over the, the last uh, yeah, the last few games and got away with Lusik in this one, scoring like solid enough. But those were two. I was like, ah, oh, damn, I really wanted at least Brown because... Um, yeah, like I've been talking about him for a while. Had him in the head-to-head -head team, but I decided to play Piyakura over Talangi in the head-to-head -head team because I didn't play Piyakura in mine. And I just wanted to, if he did score a try, I didn't want to be like mad about it. Um, so I did that. But anyway, Talangi is the one we needed to play. Hilarious how unlucky that head-to-head -head team has been this year. Some of my decisions and there's some luck. Clear, the clearest situation has been funny as I've traded him in like three times. But yeah, Brown 79 chance of Moses coming back next week. I still think that he's going to be involved in a lot. Obviously, kick meters will be down. The rest of it, probably not so much. He'll still have his ball, hands on the ball probably 75% of the time of what he had last night and should be able to get 50s for you and be fine. Payne asked 66 was great. Uh, yeah, we're not looking at him as a buy. Just hold him to origin. Ricky, 63, the up and down nature of him continues with a line break try assist. Bailey Simonson. People were talking about like, oh, is, is Blaze a buy? I was like, you mean Bailey, right? <laughs> 12 tackle breaks and three offloads for him. Massive score and showing a little bit more of what we uh, hoped from him in the preseason, which is which is nice for him on that one. Uh, you got Hopgood there, 58. With that one, 61 minutes, solid, take it. He's priced, priced around there. Um, yeah, worked hard. Two turnover tackles was good for him. Hold again until we find out what happens with Origin. If he doesn't make Origin, he's a buy, which is cool. Mariner with two tries. Walshy with a try, four goals, a try assist as well. Just the tackle break numbers were down there at two. So if that was up, he'd be in the mid 50s and a good score, but still 48 is fine. Where he's priced at, he's underneath that. So that's good. Ezra Man, for those that own him, still 46. Eight missed tackles was a bit of a killer and an error, but got enough on other parts of the game in three turnover tackles and the try, try saver, and obviously the try assist as well. So that was cool. Hold on to him for a bit. Hold on to your hats. Hold on, hold on to him until round 16, really. Sean Lane, he's like he's starting to score better. Sean Lane, 44, so much better game from him. Got the offloading handout, which was good. That's about it. We need to say on Lane, just hold on. If you've got him now, you can with the 44. Carrigan, 43. Yeah, a bit of an off game from him. He had two penalties and four missed tackles. So neg 12 on that one hurts. Puts him up closer to the 50 mark if you just you know, take a few of those away. And uh, yeah, good tackle numbers, obviously, but no tackle breaks. One offload to ground. Nothing special for Carrigan here. He's getting closer to a sell. Obviously, guys, we've seen... Since Payne has his return, his scores have lowered a little bit, 56, 56, and a 43 now. That was expected. This is kind of the scoring that you get from him when Payne is there. So that's that. Jensen ended up scoring pretty well at 42 in that back half of the game. He's in like 20-odd in um, low 20s, I think, with like 10 minutes to go. I think. Yeah, it was weird. 12 minutes, maybe. Smoothie got most of this game given Wal Walters hurt his wrist. He was praying he was carrying it into the game, and that didn't help. Penasini, 39. Moses coming back, he's getting closer to a purchase. If you do like him as a buy, 
that can work out. He obviously got three tackle breaks, a couple offloads. Six missed tackles, like it's still up, which is weird, considering he doesn't usually miss too many. That's what's hurting his game at the moment, for sure. Cobo there, 38, with a try, two line breaks. Much better score from him. You'll take it if you own. You want more, though, with you know two line breaks and a try, for sure. Just the negatives again, neg 12. Rogers with 38. Eight missed tackles, though. Not sure if he'll keep his spot off the back of that, but he did his job, for sure. Um, he tackled well enough. Obviously, he missed the most in his team, but yeah. First, first game in, well, his second game in um in first grade. So hopefully that can improve next week if he plays. Last he got 62 minutes. So that was good enough, better than 53. I think he had a pretty good game, to be honest with you. He gave great service out of dummy half. And um, yeah, obviously didn't run much. He kicked a couple out of dummy half as well. And closer to 40 20s, they were both like in the range, which you know, was good. Good early kicks. And yeah, 35 tackles. I still didn't see the, I think I saw one miss. I'm not sure about the second one, but we'll take it. 37. Happy days. To be honest, like we'll just take it. We'll roll with him for a little bit. He won't lose too much money. Hang around 500K and then we'll see what's happening with him and Braley and make that decision in my team. Russell got the goal kicking, 37. So good stuff from him. Moses will be back soon and take that. Madison, 36. He absolutely teases us every time. 28 tackles, two misses, three tackle breaks and 61 meters. So like when he got the ball, he was able to get some tackle breaks, but... Yeah, I suppose the minutes in this one, he ended up playing like 50-odd on the edge, five minutes or something, three minutes in the middle. Maybe a bit longer, actually. No, yeah, a bit longer, actually. It was longer than that. Um, Hopgood then just came on, and then a few minutes later, Maddo, Maddo went off. So I suppose that's the only thing. Like with Tuolangi on the bench, you know that Lane was going to get the full 80, and then Tuolangi's going to have to come on the edge somewhere. It's hard to see Maddo go all that time on the edge and then play all this time in the middle when he hasn't been playing large minutes. That was probably the big thing with Maddo. And uh, yeah, that's how it played out, unfortunately. And he just continues to tease tease fantasy players every year. He's like, oh, he finally gets a good role. He gets a good score. Let's buy him now. And then he and then he shits the bed. So super frustrating. Hopefully that uh, you know if Cardi is out again, that he can get another you know decent score. But the thirty six doesn't help too much. And yeah, again, hopefully it's uh it ends up okay for him. But a frustrating watch last night. Like it was looking pretty good early, like decent enough early on. It's like, well, if he plays the eighty, he'll get fifty. But wasn't the case in this one. So hopefully next week for owners, he does get the big minutes for you. Stags, 30, Kemp Gillard, Sivo, Willison, 26. I think he's getting closer to a sell now, guys. He's made some good money for you in the end, up to 459. And at 26 now, you'll kind of stagnate and then start to lose if he continues to score there. But um, yeah, a few times he got close to breaking the line and stuff like that. So that was solid. But yeah, 26 for him, it's ready, you know, ready to sell. Speaking of ready to sell, this guy's way more of a sell priority than uh, that of Xavier Wilson, and that is Brennan Picura. I'm not sure what's going on, guys. He's not the same player that he was last year. He actually looked like he had you know, a lot of vigor when he ran the ball. He's copped a, an ankle injury, a knee injury. He was carrying a bit of a knee problem in preseason as well. So, yeah, not great there at all for Brennan. And, uh, yeah, six missed tackles. He just, like, can't hang on to him. Chops at the legs when it's not his tackle all those types of things that you hate as a fantasy coach and hate watching. So you just can't do it. Done. After last night, that's it. Get him out of your side. He's gone straight to weeks for me. Simple as that. Thankfully, I can do that. But um, yeah, absolutely gross. Penalty, six missed tackles, ran for 43 meters and got one tackle break and 18 tackles in 52 minutes. It's disgusting. Get him out of your side. Jack Koseski, it was no better. So that left-hand edge. The left-hand edge got 12 points in 80 minutes with 23 tackles seven misses, two errors, a penalty, and an inside 10, and 91 meters. So that's that. Let's leave this one at that, guys, for that. We'll do, I'll do Supercoach tomorrow. I've got, got to head off to uh, soccer, which will be fun. Um, Brennan Hands, 19 minutes as well. So that's that. There you go. We'll leave it at that, guys. Thank you so much for being here for this one, for watching all the games, for listening to my content. You're absolute legends. And uh, for anyone going to Magic Round, I'd love to say hello. I will be there next week as well. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments or DM me if you're going to be around. I'll um, I'll let people know when where I am at certain times and we'll go from there. See you guys.